There's just one kind of coffee at the cafe. Couple kinds of beer at MAKO. Where hard work pays and Jesus saves. Weekends come and hell gets raised. Don't eat much, we can't hunt, fish, or grow. And we like life that way. Sweet and slow and simple. Ain't for much we pay. Cause all we need's a little. So just remember when you're driving through nowhere. To us, that's the middle of somewhere. Awesome. Thanks, Charlie. Thanks so much for opening up the show. I know it's a little nerve wracking at times, but uh, I like it when the guests do that. Right? Yeah. So, yeah. And you did it on the fly, too, which is amazing. Well, I appreciate you having me in, man. Yeah, hey, welcome looking to forward the to it. Construction life, the little studio here, right? Yeah. So, and I, I just want a quick shout out to Kim because he's kind yeah. of the the six degrees of Kevin Bacon here. You guys know each other through networking, through his business, and and what you're doing, and that's how you we chatted briefly on DMs, and all of a sudden here you are, and yeah. I love it. So, yeah. and you're a kid. I'm sorry. I mean, I don't mean it in a negative way. <laughs> I mean it in a positive way because I get a sense of what kind of person that you are, and then what kind of business you got started. But we're going to talk a lot about you being 17 years old and, and starting a business. And, and you technically started it when? How far back? I've been doing it four years now. Four years now? Yes, yes. So it's like you realize that every other 17, 16, 15, 14 year old not doing what you're doing. Yeah, they're, they're doing You know that, thing. right? <laughs> I'm just saying, right? I'm just, which is great. Yeah. My, huge amount of respect for you, man. So Thank awesome. You. So where's the VIL? What does it stand for? Very important landscapes. Yeah. VIL Landscaping. Charlie Kerrigan is here. Uh, website is villandscaping.net. The number is 365-228-1010. You can reach him on his email, which is charlie at villandscaping.ca and all of our social media under VIL underscore landscaping and also on LinkedIn. You're on LinkedIn too. We are? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that's amazing. Like, okay, why? First of all, you're 14 years old. Why? Um, I needed to make some money, so I started knocking on doors and started in just enjoying it. Your area, like your neighborhood? Yeah, yeah, okay. just being outside. I always loved the outdoors, um, and then I found out I can make some money being outside, getting my hands dirty, um, and then just learning, like the next thing, the next learning how to do a patio or a fence or a deck, and just there's always a bigger job I could sell or a bigger... Um, so just always getting better is what drove me. What did you get start. the information for? Like, Like, what was the reason... Um, or how, how are you getting the information to come into this industry? Um, just meeting people within the industry, uh, seeing You guys. weren't nervous? You weren't shy to go up to complete strangers and go, listen, can you help me out kind of thing? Um, after the first few, it was, I, I realized the risk versus reward was worth it. And just going up to guys, their rigs parked to the side of the street, just introducing myself or networking groups or just b building, building... Um, my community of people, I guess. So. so what did you, what was the first thing you learned when you got started the business? What was the first thing that you tackled? Just um, lawn care, right? Yeah, just lawn care, garden cleanup, super simple stuff. Stuff that most people don't care to do, even if they have yeah. the time to do it, they don't want to do it. Just late. You're in a groove already, so then you show up and then you just take care of it and you make it look like it's manicured. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That was how it started. That's how it started. While you're doing that, you're paying attention to what's wrong with their patio, what's wrong with their steps, what's wrong with their, and then you, you're making a sales pitch at that point. Yeah, whether it's that or really just, uh, I'm sure a lot of guys can relate to this, is people ask you to do something and, and then you just learn and figure it out. And then next thing you know, you're doing patios every day. And, so. and now these days, four years later, what are you doing? Um, we're doing a lot of landscape design and installs, more construction side of things. And then also we, we do a lot of bin rentals uh, through GTA. Uh, so we use our hook lift truck for renting bins and also doing doing landscape jobs. So when you got started, what was the vehicle that you were driving to get all the, mow, the lawn care? Going so on? I was 14 years old. So I, I had a bike trailer um, and I built a little trailer thing uh, with some wood and whatnot. And uh, it's like the trailers that people have kids in. No, no, I know. I know yeah. exactly what you're talking so, about. So I kind of built that out um, and just put my lawnmower and had a little trimmer rack and that's how... A little jerry can of gas. Yeah, and away we went. And that was it. Yeah. Wow. That's impressive. When did you finally take the plunge to get something with an engine in it? 
Um, so I, I bought a truck, I think I was either 15 or 16 and just hired guys to, to drive. And then the next so you thing, don't even have your license. No, no, you didn't have your license at the time. Wow. So. Where are you getting all this from? Like, where are you getting all this? Like, I just make it happen. Just kind of mentality. I, I always wanted to, to get to the next step and just keep, keep growing and learning. And, um, yeah, there's so always, what's, what's on the horizon right now? Just more uh, intense landscape designs and builds eventually get into pools and bigger outdoor living spaces. Um, with being South Oakville here, there's there's a lot of that going on. There's a lot of work here, right? Yeah. How do clients react to you when they meet you and you're actually talking? You know what you're talking about. Like, how do they react? I, I don't say I'm the owner. Uh, so, you know, to be honest, I wouldn't want a 17-year-old installing a pool in my, my property. So... That's that's kind of how I've gone about it. And yeah. It's worked. But. Did you try it at any time? Did you present yourself as the owner? Well, I mean, Charlie, one day you're going to have to present yourself as the owner, right? You're going to wait until you get some beard or something like that? It's it's like something <laughs> like that, yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm just impressed. I'm impressed with that, that you're basically hungry enough to try some ideas and then you're not even abandoning the idea. You're actually saying there's potential behind this and I, I want it to be brought to the next level the next step, the next opportunity. Yeah. Like, that's pretty impressive, man. Thank you. You don't see it as impressive? I just want to keep going. You just keep on going. What are your friends doing? Um, they're, they're doing their thing. A lot of guys are... They're not doing your thing. They're, they're contractors. Oh, they, so they are getting into the construction as well. Hammers. Um, some do like home builds up in Muskoka. Uh, other guys do their landscaping thing. Yeah. A lot of them are older. I don't hang out with anyone my age there. Why not? They're probably on the couch or partying or video, ta- or video games and just what, chilling out or whatever. Doing. Yeah, still in school. Who gave you this hunger? Like, who planted this in you? Um, it's a good question. I, I can't pinpoint it on anyone specifically, but um, one guy will give a shout out to International Landscaping, Baldo and Santo there. They've mentored me from the start. How did you and, meet them? Um, I was doing work across from Baldo's house. And uh, he came over, he saw the bike trailer and just said hi. Started talking? Yeah, yeah. Um, so just seeing their operation and how big they are and just wanting to be way better than them. And Were you in awe when you went over to see what they had? Their yes. toys and you're like going one day kind of thing, one day? Yeah. And really? And, and then I was just like, well, how much harder do I really need to work to, to get there and do better? What was his answer for that? No, that's just what was well, going on in my head. that's what you were head. thinking, yeah. Huh? Yeah. Did you have the nerve to ask him at that time, or have you no. not? You haven't asked him yet. No. Well, they might be listening. They might know right now, right? Yeah. So they're. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you know what though? You, I bet you, you're probably asking without even asking it. They're probably seeing the hungry. That's what I'm, I'm. That's what I'm seeing is that they're realizing. Listen, if you got the initiative to get this bicycle going with a little trailer, and move your mower from one place to the next place and do the job, then what's the difference between this being a pickup truck and a brand a trailer? Yeah. With a skid steer on the back, like what's the difference really? That's how you're looking at it, right? Exactly. So where's the plan ultimately? Have you thought that far back like, or that far ahead? Yeah, so just being able to build more intense landscape designs is really where I want to get it. And having multiple crews doing backyard, sticking to residential, uh, but backyard oasis pools. Uh, is it just you now these days? Or no, you got... So we have a team of nine people. Uh, we have four full-time crews out doing their thing. Holy cow. And you're the owner of the business? Yes. yes. And you got a crew of nine people. Yes. They all drive. You're the only one that doesn't drive? I'm usually stuck in the office or, or meeting people, prospecting. So, so you're not working anymore? Or you're not on the tools anymore, I should say. Sorry. Correct. Yes. Yes. I enjoy it. Don't get me wrong, but I can't find the time to get out there. So, so you're just hustling sales? Yeah, sales, and then we we have an admin that does all the calls, emails, keeps everything, keeps me in line. Um, yeah. So how busy are you guys? We're we're pretty busy. So what happens come winter time now? Because a lot of guys in landscape shift gears into plowing, right, and yeah. winter maintenance and things like that. Yes, yeah. so that's what you guys do as well. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Putting spikes on the bike or what? Like I don't understand. <laughs> like, how do you get around at that point? I'm impressed, Charlie. Like totally. I'm I'm like you're 17 years old. You got a crew of nine. You started with a bicycle and hunger and you just had the balls to just go up to complete strangers and go, listen, can you help me 
like learn. Yeah. I just, can you teach me anything about this business? Like I just, I'll, I'll, I'm a sponge. I'll just absorb it. And now here you are like four years later and you're still a teenager and you're handling a crew and you're making phone calls and is the voice deeper on the phone or like what's going on when you're making calls and you're doing your sales? It's like, how does <laughs> I'm impressed. I'm totally impressed, man. Thank you. No, it's good for you, man. It's amazing. So you, I want you to share some secrets. I'd love to like, how are you marketing yourself? How are you selling yourself? How do you look at this industry? Are you paying attention to like where people are leaving money on the table? Like people are not taking the same opportunities. I get the sense that you're looking at so much opportunity. You're like going, I don't understand what people complain about. Like there's really, it's just positive ahead of me. Is that not how you're looking at it? Yeah. Yeah. And a, a big thing I see is being so good in the trade, in the industry, but leaving so much on the table in the business aspect, the, the numbers, looking over so, so much of that. And I'm by no means perfect at that, no. but getting better and focusing a lot of time on reviewing that sort of thing, uh, whether it's profit margins, whether it's revenue per hour, what the guys are bringing in, um, all, all that sort of thing. Where are you getting your pricing from? How are you deciding on what your rates are going to be like are you paying attention to suppliers and the material costs and the changes and what's going on there and what your deliverable like are you looking at everything are you going on youtube and just understanding business courses and ideas and like yeah well between that and talking to other guys in the industry and everything always changes like you have your pricing in the spring it's different than what you're gonna charge in, in slower times like come august or that sort yeah. of thing so supply and demand really right so how are you walking into suppliers and having a conversation with them about stones and about aggregate? Like, are are they like you walk in and they look over your shoulder going, where's your the owner of the business kind of thing? Like, are they, I'm assuming they are, right? Yeah, at first, um, we've built a good relationship with a few guys we do use. Uh, Boulder's Landscape Supply, they're, they're right. amazing. And then... Where are they look In Oakville? No. Yeah, Ford and Royal Winds are there. Okay, yeah. Um, so they're, they're awesome. Um, and then also Acorn Landscape Supply, they, they help us out quite a bit too. You got to be their youngest client, no? Possibly. It's, I'm not. I, I don't. I'm not going to keep on bringing it up, but I'm just like it's not a negative, at all, because you got more hunger and drive than a lot of people that have been in the business for ten plus, twenty plus, whatever years, right? Thank you. You get to a certain point, you grow, and then you lose it for whatever reason, right? Yeah. But it seems like you, like if you've got all this hunger to do this, you're only going to grow more and more. Is that the that's the plan? Is to go from nine to like nineteen? It's like you're going to keep on growing more and more people. Yeah, just keep keep going. Were you finding the employees? Um, once we've got a, a few down through through their friends or, or through their network of people, and then also Indeed. Um, yeah, a lot of guys have been saying Indeed. Like they've been saying so many lot. tire kickers, but it's you get a lot of calls and no shows. Yeah, yeah, like the the people just getting them to show up is hard. Never mind them being a good candidate. But. <laughs> Well, it's refreshing to hear a person of your age to say that because a person my age is always saying that, right? That's yeah. like that's the the problem is that you'll get a lot of inquiries, but you'll not nobody will show up, or they'll try to find something else that's going to pay them a few dollars more, yeah. or whatever it is, right? Yeah. But you're understanding the market and you're getting an idea of what the rates should be like, what you're you're being fair about the payment and setting up everything. So, and you're coming from the work itself. So you, the, anybody who's going to work for you is not going to be questioning whether or not you can handle this, right? Yeah, and the guys are everything. They're the backbone to your business. Yeah. They're your face out in the field. And treating them treating them right is, is so worth it. Is this what you thought it was going to be like? What when do you, you mean? thought about construction and you thought about landscaping and hardscaping, is this what it, like, is it fitting the mold that you thought it was going to be like when you went into it? Because you're getting started. You're just learning everything. So everything's brand new at that point. Is it exactly how you thought it was or was it, is it different? It's so much more simple than I thought. I overthought a lot of things um, when I didn't know how to do it. Like this, putting a paver patio in or retaining what was this massive thing. But you, you, then you start doing it every day. You're like, oh. It's not that hard. Yeah. So you can handle a quick cut? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm... I'm, I'm well, Honestly, I, I don't know if I can. My crews can. Yeah, that's what I meant. <laughs> like you figured out the crew that take care of everything else for you, right? Yeah. Yeah. So why are the jerseys yellow? So everyone's either green and then they've got their high vises, right? Yeah. 
So you don't see any yellow landscapers, but yellow is, it's, it's high visibility. It stands out. It's unique. So there's a safety aspect there. And also no one else does it. So that was my thought when I was 14 and just stuck with it. So then when you have the crew on a site, it's pretty clear that you'll see a VILN job, right? Where it's like, that's, that's yeah. them. Well, you also see jobs where there's either two different companies working beside each other and they all have high visas on, so you can't tell. That's true. That's a good point. <laughs> what else you want to share? I, I'm, I'm, try, I'm still a little amazed at what you pulled off and I'm, I can only imagine what the business is going to be like 10 years from now. Where are you going to go from there? Are you, you're being profitable, obviously, right? Yeah. Because you started this whole to make money, right? Yeah. How does it feel to be at your age and paying some serious taxes and all this other stuff, right? That's lovely. <laughs> <laughs> it sucks, man. <laughs> it totally sucks. Because I guess, are there any breaks for you guys at that age? No, there's no breaks, right? Nope. You're bringing in money, you're bringing in money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. <laughs> <laughs> no, as if there's a way to hide it or something, but there isn't. Yeah. But it's just like, are you going to trade shows too? Yeah, doing doing what we can. Um, yeah. Are you are you setting up the whole being a part of associations, Landscape Ontario, things like that? Yeah, we're part of Landscape Ontario and, and doing whatever booths we can to meet many, whether it's PMs or architects or home builders as well. They're big avenues for for us getting our foot in the door. What's who's the oldest on the crew and who's the youngest? The youngest would probably be, I think. 19 18 or 19 okay the oldest probably 40 um, how's a 40 year old feel working for you i don't think they know how old i am <laughs> you just take a guess I, i'm i'm curious what they think to be honest but yeah. i don't tell them um there's no reason for it, it doesn't make any yeah. sense you're building a, you're building an empire yeah so just keep on building it they're, they, they're they, getting work they're busy and they get paid on time they get paid on time and you're creating a positive environment mm -hmm. and they get to go home and see what they accomplished uh you're pleasing the clients you're delivering words getting out you're getting a lot of word of mouth now right yeah lots of word of mouth google has been really big for us too um just people talking what are you doing on google your specific ads you're, you're targeting certain things no no ads just having our reviews has really been been what's good for us it's generating you guys views at that point people are yeah because when things. when you pay for it you come up as sponsored and whenever i'm looking to hire someone i skip right by those because they pay to be there so if you can do it organically then um, and you're doing that too we don't do the sponsor stuff we're just no no that's sponsor there. stuff handling all the seo and handling all the reviews and handling all that stuff like getting the messaging out there yeah whether it's me or, or my assistant whatever um but yeah in-house okay so where does a 17 year old find an assistant to handle a landscaping business um indeed she reached i think she saw us on indeed um and then she reached out and she had experience on our crm um at a, another company so it was it was awesome um it was a good fit so. just uh why aren't you like partying up and drinking and all this other stuff like why don't you do that i want to be the like best manny what i want to be the best <laughs> Why aren't you like outfitting the bicycle and the trailer with like neon lights and spinners or something <laughs> like wasting all your money on that? I don't know. During right. the week, it's lawnmower. During the weekend, it's bottles of booze. I don't know. Why aren't <laughs> you doing all that? No, I love that you want to like grow it. You totally want to grow it as a brand. Yeah. And it's, it, it is growing now. It's amazing that it's growing like that. And everyone's, I guess, so you're going to expand outside of Oakville? You're going to start getting into other territories? If, if it's worth it, um, like keeping all of our, our maintenance stuff, in Oakville, um, if the job's worth it or big enough, we'll travel, but not not so much the plans. Take I mean, over. Yeah, Oakville is nice because the yards are a good size. They're usually filled with a lot of opportunity, and I say that regarding shrubs and trees and all kinds of things like that. So you, you have a lot of work seasonally, like you all throughout the whole year. You have a lot of work. And and the thing is, I'm, I'm being very honest, it's a pain in the butt to – maintain yard when you're at home and you're busy and you have family and all this other stuff it's yeah. a lot easier to call you up and go listen can i just hire you and i the, whatever it is it's, i guess it's a retainer at that point for the whole year right yeah. you pay monthly or whatever it is and and then that problem's taken care of so the homeowner comes home and it's manicured by vil yeah like that's I, and they just like thank you so much appreciate it right exactly exactly well yeah and it is is good the property sizes are fairly small like i'm sure you see the the builders up in like muskoka and landscapers up there the stuff they do is nuts and 
getting getting in that market might be in the future. But have you done a pedestal patio yet? The pedestal footing? We haven't. No, you haven't done that yet. No, I, I I've seen those. And yeah, it looks I've done nice. it for decking only. I haven't done it for stones yet. Yeah, but I know a lot more people are considering them, especially on second floor for you know waterproofing and then the floating system. And there's a lot of good companies that are coming out with some really good pedestals. I remember years ago five or six years ago when i was just getting into trying that stuff yeah it was very challenging to just get the pedestals there was only two companies at the time and they weren't cheap but nowadays there's a lot of companies that are now offering the pedestals to do it and they're actually integrating so you could put the two foot by two foot patio stones in between each one yeah and then you're literally leveling it as you go which is amazing and just like turning them up or down yeah right on it's pretty simple system right floating system and then you're just walking on it yeah right? yeah but I mean, it's that's for second floor structure, or like or, rooftops. And yeah, stuff. rooftops yeah. and things like yeah. that. But when I get onto grade and you're just doing the base, you can do whatever, you know. Yeah. You do all your sand, you do all your stuff, right? And then lay it down that way. If you work in the trades, maybe you're a plumber, a framer, or an electrician, you need to check out Black Ladder Workwear. Their work clothes are tough, functional, and durable, much like you might find in high-end outdoor gear, but it's designed specifically for work in the trades. They put a ton of intentional thought into their products, everything from knee pad inserts, zip-off utility pockets, and reinforced inseams. They've got it all. Visit blackladder.ca forward slash en forward slash tcl to learn more and take 15% off your order by using code tcl at the checkout. What's the biggest pro like what's the biggest challenge in landscaping these days? Um, like obviously people, but every business has that the issue. The people that work for your business or the people just, that you're just finding people, uh, finding good people. It's hard to find people, huh? People don't want to deal with hard like, but you're saying it's not hard labor. No, it's hard labor. Uh, just finding people who have half a brain is pretty tough. Really? They don't want to, like, they don't... They just want to show up to clock in and clock out. And that's it, huh? I've always said it, man. If they don't care about your business at all, then they're not going to care about being there at all. Yeah. They have to care about your business. Yeah. So how are you going to solve that problem? So are you working on that one? Yes, we are working on that one, and between people and putting systems in place those are our biggest pain points so working on incentive programs and that sort of thing is what where my head's at and especially throughout the winter um profit share somewhat so it's connected we to they need to make they have a certain amount of hours per year and um that foreman has whatever a crew of three they can hammer out how many however many hours per year each hour they need to be making a certain amount of revenue. So the end of the year, that crew can probably put out whatever, $450,000. Okay. If they hit that $450,000, when they do, they get 2.5% of that would be their, their profit share. If they don't and they're behind, that 2.5% goes to making up whatever the extra labor was or being behind budget, uh, extra material, extra... Makes sense, yeah. Wh whatever else. So if they hit that before the 12 months then they get that incentive um so that's that's what, what i think and I, I know many guys doing the same thing yeah because it works it totally makes sense it just gets them interested in in supporting your business because now they're an extension of your idea now exactly and they start to learn and realize how much waste there is whether it's at the yard whether it's driving you're not bringing in revenue driving for getting a jerry can or for getting a shovel they, they start to really think like that. And just being transparent and open with the numbers, the revenue, what we need to be doing per hour to meet those, um, those, those numbers. So four years into the business, at what point in those four years did you sit down and you went over the hump of, I just want to make money, right? And you started realizing, I need to put systems into this business to, for this business to grow. And I really want it to grow a certain way because it can grow and look like it's making money. Yeah. But that's not growth. Yeah. So what year was that? Year one, year two, year three? Was that recent? Like when, when did you figure out that? So I, I would say fairly recently. Um, once I started taking responsibility for everything and not just blaming it on people as all some owners seem to do, um, everyone should take responsibility for stuff. It's, it's all my fault at the end of the day. It's my fault. The system's not in place. It's my fault. It rained that day. It's my, whatever. So everything was my fault and all these mess ups were happening. And I was started to take accountability for stuff. 
And that's when I realized that we need something in place so there's not all these mess ups and it's a bulletproof uh, system. How do you educate your employees to admit it's my fault and I'm costing the business money now? How do you do that without saying? I, need I think it's a respect thing and they would look up to you as a business owner or leader. And if they see you doing it, then they seem to take it on. And Yeah, it's true. I agree. And then that's, that's the environment you're building or creating. And the foreman start doing it. Then the labors are start being open um, and start taking responsibility for things. What kind of bike was it? It was a bike I found the side of the curb, a Norco bike. It wasn't even a brand new bike that you bought. Like it was, <laughs> it was just a. We, we were on a budget, Manny. <laughs> <laughs> did you repaint it? Did you fix? Did you have to fix anything? Fix the chain? Yeah, no, tire. It, it the was. Tire. It was pretty bad. The tires were okay. The tires were done. All right. No, they were awful, but they didn't get fixed. <laughs> um, it, it was, yeah, it was a loose program, but it got it done and. And then the next year, I, I bought a, a mower. So we rode the mower around. <laughs> what and kind of mower did you get? It was a, a right stand-on mower. Okay. So we just threw everything on that and had our lawn route. Wait, so you, you were riding the mower to the job sites to cut everything? Yeah, and then the rest of the crew were on bikes. Do you have any photos of this? Have you shared this online? I'd l- love yeah. to see this history, the story there, man. That's yeah, it's amazing. all on our Instagram <laughs> and the website. <laughs> yeah. And you still using the mower? Yeah, yeah. Still using the mower. All right. So Every w- day. Tell me a little bit about the arsenal of tools that the crew's using. Like, what do you guys have out there? What are you guys using? Why? Like, what color tools are you guys? You guys got to be yellow or no? Certain tools, smaller tools? No, we, we use whatever works. Whatever works for yeah, you guys. That's whatever it. gets it done. That's, there's no, there's not about like whatever the cool kids are using or whatever. This is what I'm going to use, right? No, no. There's no reason. We're, to we're the cool kids because we make money. We don't <laughs> need to spend money on all the fancy stuff. You're the cool kids because you're making money. I love it, man. It's great. Yeah. You're not spending on all these tools. You don't need yeah. it. So you don't buy new tools then, or you don't. The crew doesn't get unless you really need that. If we need it, we'll get good tools am i seeing all the cool hardscape guys using those suction tools now because the stones are getting heavier which is kind of good because your body gets beaten up right well it saves their back and you, your your back's why. priceless so yeah it is worth it so it makes sense at that point right yeah. and then just creating it especially when you got clients really asking for some large hardscapes right yeah yeah well and also protecting the stone the product that's doesn't doesn't cheap. get any cheaper no no each one is not cheaper right, right. <laughs> What, so okay so where else okay i love the systems you want to share a little bit about how you're implementing if you can i don't i don't know if you want to divulge it's all trade secret or something like that but like what are you looking at like overall the whole s- scope of the business because obviously you split the business up probably in half one is the actual physical work that's being done and second is the actual administrative side of the work which also i guess includes the sales side of the business right yeah yeah so systems really um, like the admin systems has been more more simple for us. Um, just we we reviewed what needs to be done and then delegated that accordingly and cheat sheets in place, lots of Google Docs, just less systems checklists. That, that's simple. But in the field, there's always something that went wrong, always something that got forgotten. So we have our, our meeting every morning with the guys at the yard. We review what what went sideways yesterday or what went good. Yeah. Uh, and then try to replicate that and and keep getting better. So you're you're always analyzing what's going on, good or bad. Yes, yes. To understand why it went good and how can we continue that and why it went bad and how do we avoid ever doing that again. Yes. Simple as that. Exactly. That's why when you talked earlier about saying that it was really simple for you to actually get into this and start building it, you figured out how to do it because you just broke it down simply. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And with the incentive program, if everyone cared that much more, like why, why were we short on material or why didn't we hit our budgeted hours? Why are we behind on man hours? Everyone cares so much more because their bonus, like 2.5% of whatever they're, whatever they're doing is it's worth it to care about. Right. Yeah. Um, so getting everyone on that wavelength and having a, an environment based around that. Safety and PPE. You guys are always cutting stone. Yeah, not everything's always being cut 
perfectly with wet or whatever, but you always got to just be cautious of all the airborne and dealing with all that stuff. Yeah. And you're also paying, you're paying attention to all of that stuff, right? Yes. And, um, dustless saws, uh, coming out like IQ saw has, has an amazing yeah. saw. Yeah. Um, so that's been cool experimenting with that. Um, they're a good saw. Yeah. Quite slow. It has to be. It's the trade off, right? Yeah. But you don't get this plume of smoke, right? Yes. And then you're not breathing all this stuff in and it just you know who hasn't clipped their nose hairs. It's yeah. just like that's how obvious it is, right? There's there's way too much in the air if yeah. you see all this stuff. Nose and ear. You know what I mean? It's just like yeah, it's smart that I get it. They'll probably improve it. I think it's only the second or third gen. As far as I know, I think it's only the second or third gen. I bumped into them recently at ProSol, and I was chatting with them. But I, I remember seeing IQ, I'm going to say, seven or eight years ago for the first time, right? Yeah, I'm not sure what, what generation they're on, but I'm sure they're, they're working on things to get them. I'm sure they'll, they'll, they'll get there and be able to compete with like Yeah. Cats. Are you getting all the guys in, on the crew, like hearing protection is big too as well? Because yes. it's just you guys are dealing with noise right yeah way above decibel levels that we're, we're allowed to be right yeah so we have in all of our hardscape bins and and stuff have a bunch of glasses always have lots of uh, between glasses hearing protection masks so there's no excuse not to wear it have you been visited by ministry of labor yet we haven't no i'm not saying you will i hope you don't i mean just like you'll be cool about it it's totally fine yeah. but they, um you never know it's a, you stay long enough in this game you'll yeah. be visited but you know you don't have to necessarily deal with building inspectors, do you? No. No, for the most part. Well, no, like the town, actually. Closing permits for pools. We've done a lot of yeah. wrapping things up. Yeah. We're, we're the last in. The pool goes in, then we do, we do everything How after that. How many pools have you done? We haven't done any pools yet. Okay, you're getting gearing up to, yes, to get yes. into that world. Just yet. working with guys like Pioneer Pool or, or Gibson um, and from, from the coping and then all the hardscape stuff after they're done their thing. But you're getting ready to do your own pool, right? Eventually, yes. What yes. and what's your research telling you? Um, like subbing it out has been. I, I don't have the skill part of our team to be able to to handle it, handle it, and make money on it. Now, obviously, the first few we're gonna point, break right? even or yeah. or lose. Um, so I've kind of been comfortable making my percent. So sub it out. Pay attention to what they do. See yeah. if your crew ever gets. I guess at a certain level that they can tackle it themselves, but you're you're 100 percent right that subbing it out is probably the better the better fit, right? Yeah, and we're able to be so much more efficient if the guys are doing the same thing every single day. A patio can only differ so much. Like pavers are pavers, and like the design might be a bit different, or the stone might be different, but it's all pretty much the same. Who do you like stone wise? Who's making? I d I just know that there's a lot of companies out there. I don't know too much on what's better or, or what's yeah. going on, like stone-wise. I haven't done one in a long, long time, so I haven't been in that whole world. But, I mean, are there particular brands that you like, particular products that you like? Um, we use lots of uh, Unilock stuff. Yep. That's been it's worked good for us. Our suppliers always work with us to find out what we need. Um, yeah. I like that Unilock recently did some introduction of cobblestone knockoffs right yes it's really funny that i would say 10 years maybe 11 years ago i was really digging into unilock and all the other suppliers saying why can't you guys bring europe and their stone and the way they have it and these little pebbles and the bigger grooves yeah. why can't you bring that to canada and they just kept on saying nobody wants it and i'm like the last two years three years maybe Unilock and other manufacturers, just it's a rash of these types of stone now. Yeah. They're just knockoffs of the old granite and marble walkways from Europe, UK, Europe, all that stuff, because it looks beautiful. And now they're doing it now, which is like, you guys are about 10 years too late. Like, I wanted this way that I'm like. Yeah, and so they're coming out with so many more options too, not just their standard cobblestone, whatever they're, they're selling and incorporating it with soldier course or sailor yeah. courses yeah. and patios. It's been I was never a big fan of the large, flat, just plain pavers. I get that there was less joints, but I was never a fan of it. But I mean, that's all the clients, most clients, that's what they wanted. Well, and it's more of a modern look. It just... <laughs> Boring look. Yes. I, don't, I don't know, man. Maybe because it's just my age and I'm more of a traditionalist and I'm more European. I just like 
that craftsmanship yeah from that old i i know how the the stone is supposed to be installed i know what the process is attached to and everything like that and i just think that years ago maybe decades ago here in canada it was kind of dumbed down for a lack of a term it was just like let's make it simpler and just get it out there unilock's famous for that yeah zigzag stone which i, I think they still sell I believe so, yeah. I think they still sell it, right? Yeah. Which is not really a good-looking stone. Um, but, yeah, their stone line now is a lot better. Yeah. A lot, lot better. Well, more and so better. much more diversified. Yeah. yeah. Right? And it, it, is it good quality? Is it easy to cut? Is it easy to shape? Yeah. Unilox quality is, is way better and longevity. Like, we've worked with some cheaper ones, like Best Way Stone and, and some low-end stuff. And what longevity. makes a stone cheaper like it's just what it doesn't break clean when you or doesn't cut clean i'm not the right person to ask okay. about this but i believe how like how it's manufactured and longevity and how much afflorescence it brings yeah. out yeah, i believe yeah, yeah, yeah um we've had some bad luck with best way stone on on that okay. um, this show's brought to you by best way <laughs> no it's not <laughs> this show we're allowed to say whatever we want to say because guess what it's the truth it's yeah. as simple as that right so i i respect tradespeople's opinion about what they've worked because they're boots on the ground yeah so it's like you're telling me from your experience of what you so if you've you know you your crew and you you've seen it how it's been cut how it's been shaped how it's been worked with and you're noticing that it's slightly inferior and then a tradesperson has every right to share that opinion and if anything if brands were paying attention and they were wanting to listen they should be listening so yeah. they can improve is what i'm saying so it's like if you talk to me about unilog 10 years ago i'd be saying probably the same thing that you're saying about best way today yeah but they took the time and they improved and now they've got a far superior product which should be in the market and more and more trace people should be using it or at least considering it right but then you've got to do the task of selling your client at that point yes how do you sell client how do you talk to clients how do you how do you sell yourself how do you sell vil like how do you sell them a reputation i put a lot of the I, I make it do a lot of the work for me um just people looking at our google reviews or what people say about us um and also our quality of work um i, I let it speak for itself and if they want an install from us great if they want the cheap guy they can do that too are you getting your price is a little high are you getting any of that we yeah. have somebody else that's a little cheaper well someone will always do it Cheaper. They'll even say it, right? Like they'll just they'll yeah. always be so much cheaper. Always. How do you respond to that? If if you want a cheap outcome, he'll give it to you. <laughs> they'll they'll be calling me in, in a few years when their driveway is rutted out and they're, and they're they're gonna ask you to lift it up. Yeah, yeah. Will you lift it up and fix someone else's problem for the right price? Okay, you don't mind. Do I? I always had a problem with that. I always had a problem with like if you didn't want to hire me. Don't don't call me later on when it doesn't work out. Oh, well, I've I've no problem doing it. We sell man hours if they want to keep us busy. We'll we'll do it. Interesting way to look at it. Yeah, for sure it is. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. Yeah. No interest in getting into any other trade. Like oh, being a plumber? No, nah, no. Nah, I, I don't know. Well, plumbers make a lot of money too. Um, but the thing is, like. Is there any interest? No. You just this is the this is this is your lane. This is what you're seeing and this is what you're building. Yes. Okay. Yeah. That's I, I want to stick to and to be the best, you can't be doing everything. And I think that's some guys downfalls is they reach out a little bit too far. And even within our industry, if we are able to focus on one thing, we're able to be so much more profitable and so much more competitive than everyone else because we're so good at it opposed to a guy doing a patio once a month and mowing lawns and cleaning gutters, hanging Christmas lights. I'll do some electrical. You're hanging Christmas lights? No, no, oh, no, no. Okay. But if you people spread themselves too if thin. If they want to keep on expanding and just then just kind it, of fill it, it man doesn't hours. Work. You're not interested in filling man hours. You're interested in making man hours. Yes. There's a huge difference. Yeah. Hmm. The concrete aggregates and construction industry is always evolving. 
With an ever-changing industry, it's crucial to stay up to date on the latest technology and techniques. Come to the Canadian Concrete Expo to keep your skills sharp and upgrade your knowledge to meet the needs of today's market. The Canadian Concrete Expo offers over 40 conference sessions, certification courses, stage presentations, and live large equipment demos all in one convenient location. February 14th and 15th at the International Centre in Toronto. If you haven't looked it up yet, go to the CanadianConcreteExpo.com and sign up for the newsletter to get special show offers direct to your inbox. Yeah. Pretty impressive, man. Thank you. Thank you. You going to get out of the game once you figured it out and sell it off to somebody else, franchise it over and have some, you know, like all over the cities, Oakville, Burlington, Hamilton, Toronto. I, I don't want to get into the whole franchise headache. Uh, I think take over Oakville and then maybe... Sell it off to somebody. Once I'm able to show up to jobs in my helicopter, then maybe. Because <laughs> <laughs> it could actually happen. <laughs> That's the thing I'll it. take you for a ride, man. <laughs> I'll go up. I'm not afraid. I love helicopters. <laughs> actually, funny enough story, when I went to Vancouver for Toto, and uh, we were invited for a fishing trip with Toto, and yeah. I was there with my plumber. He invited me because he didn't want to go by himself, and uh, he's, not the, he's not the best co-pilot so to speak so we actually uh, we had to fly commercial from toronto to vancouver then we had to fly prop plane from vancouver city to to an island vancouver was it vancouver i can't remember exactly and then from there was a helicopter for the last little stretch right yeah and i loved it because i love helicopters i've been in helicopters like i four or five times in my life i love them right it's just amazing that you have a machine that can go vertically and horizontally like, it's just insane. I find it, fa like, I'll never be able to learn it because it's really difficult to learn it, yeah. right? But uh, my plumber friend was not having it. He was not, <laughs> he was just like, he didn't like the movement, like, yeah. the way it could just move this machine, right? I was loving it. I thought it was a rock, <laughs> right? I was like, this is amazing. I could totally live in a helicopter. So I'll take you up on that for sure, man. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds good. <laughs> you can get your, start getting your flight, like, you get your pilot's license and get everything, then start ex go to the helicopter from that point, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it does take a while, I think. So maybe by the time I figure out the whole schooling thing, I'll... It's not that bad. I mean, on the show, you should probably give it a listen to uh, Rob from uh, ours, um, R.A. Uh, Rosati Drywall. He got his pilot license during the pandemic. Oh, yeah? Yeah, and he actually did the smart thing where he didn't go to a local place here. He went to just outside of Oshawa. He went to a smaller place, yeah. which he got in right away. And then he just did his hours. So during the whole pandemic, he went and got all of his licenses. And now he's, he can, I think he's one away from commercial, right? So, yeah. And technically he can just do his helicopter next stage if he wanted to. And he took me up uh, earlier this year. He took me up. Uh, we went from Toronto to Hamilton like in 45 minutes or something like that. It was insane. And yeah. Going right past the CN Tower. And it was like, it was awesome. And he let me fly it as well too, right? I couldn't be a pilot because there's way too many rules, right? You're yeah. constantly paying attention to all the towers as you go along and shit like that. But yeah. you got to be aware. And I'm I'm more of like I'm enjoying the scenery. I'm looking at this, but you by think the way, you'd the, be running the plane's another going plane. down. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like I'm. Why is the horizon going down? No, no. I like I like I like small smell the roses, right? Yeah. I totally like smelling roses, and I'm like, oh wait, I got to operate this shit, right? <laughs> so no, no, it's fine. I could totally see that happening. But um, how much more you want to grow? Like in the next, okay, so that's 2023. Going into 2024, what are some of the plans you got for 2024? I think if we can, we can two or three X what we're doing now. I can see that. Fairly conservative. But you'll spend more time trying to just finding those other potential nine, 18 more people to jump on board. Yeah. Is there a better way that you can try to find or... Uh, not that I know of, but I'm sure there is. So they're not even getting a hold of you. They're not even like, okay, you're getting the ads out there. You're probably having a phone call. Yeah. But they're not showing up for the job. or they Showing up for the interview. Never mind the job. So you're showing up for the interview, and you're presenting what you're going to get as employment. Yeah. Whether you're in your late teens, 20s, 30s, as high as 40, whatever, are they verbally sharing with you at that moment or are they just physically, you could see it in their body language that you're reading them going, this guy's not coming back. No, like I've thought some guys were going to be really good and they, they're awesome for a month, like the honeymoon phase. And then they, they just would flip a switch and it's like, oh. it's what was, what was like, what do you think it was? 
it's it's been so different for many. Everybody's different. Yeah, I, I'm still trying to figure it out. I haven't been able to pinpoint it. There's no system for that, huh? There needs to be. How? How do you read people that you can invest? And the thing is, you're investing in them, right? So even at a month's time, so yeah. it's like four weeks of work. Training them, getting them. Yeah. And then they fizzle out and then they're gone. What do they do? Become a plumber? Maybe. No, I doubt it. They yeah. probably leave <laughs> trades at that point, right? You never know. Like, like what? Go go uh, kick rocks? I don't, again, I don't know. Like, what do you, what's wrong with getting a little dirty and just like, like earning a hard day's pay or something like that, right? Well, and also I try to tell them like there's, and instilling them the vision and the growth and the, you know, there's always the next step, the crew lead, the, you know, whatever it is. And it's hard finding those individuals that are driven and. Are you giving them the, the hoodies too? The tees and everything? Yeah. They're getting all that. Yeah. I'd be taking it back after the month. <laughs> I do. <laughs> <laughs> like just wash it and then give it to the next see if it lasts four weeks or something. Like One guy came in for his first day and there's it was a clean shirt, but there's a bit of mud on it. And I, I think I dropped it in the morning or whatever. He wouldn't put the thing on. So I, I told him to go home. But like why do you have a problem with that? He was just about to put more mud on it. <laughs> I don't know. Like you're starting the work day. Did anybody say the pay wasn't enough? No, no. That's never an issue. Never an issue. You, you, Based on your systems, I get the sense that you're paying them a fair rate for the work that they're providing. Yeah, and with doing that, I'm able to expect uh, a fair amount. From yeah, exactly. So you know what the give and take is, yeah. what the ROI is on that person, that work, that, those man hours. Yeah. yeah. So it's not, okay, so it's not the money. So it's just a physical labor or they just don't see this as a viable option. Are you not, you must be presenting to them that here you are as a kid. This is a viable option, man. Look at the way you've set this up. It's a yeah. viable option as a career. Yeah. I think people are closed minded to that. Are you making more money than your friends? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess, no, hang on. You're comparing your friends are older. Right, but I, is it fair to say that you're making more money than the other seventeen-year-olds that were like in your 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 group, your circle? Yeah, like I, I'm not sure the ROI on video games, but well, I'm I'm assuming they probably are going to just regular jobs, like whatever fast food industry, service industry, like Starbucks, probably, yeah, maybe. Starbucks barista, yeah. like that whole thing, and I guess they're getting minimum wage, maybe a little bit more, and that's it. But that's the extent of it, right? Yeah. Yeah, you're looking at like it's amazing that you're at that age and you're you're talking language about profit sharing, about incentives, about your employees growing with you, all these perks that you get along with staying with me, and then focusing on better projects and trying to attract more attention and getting more work. And next year will be 18 employees. The year after that, possibly will be at 27 employees. It's like it's a man with a growth. Like that's who do you want to be with? Like. Yeah, I don't understand how these guys are not. They just they're not looking at it that way when they come into the interview and they go to that first month. Like, there's a hump. Sure, you got to learn everything. I'm sure there was tough for you at the beginning as well, getting started. Yeah, from nothing. So I don't understand why these the rest of these cats are not paying attention to this. Yeah, I I don't. I think people they seek comfort and pleasure a little bit too much, and they want just the comfortable clock in, clocking out. They don't want to bust their ass to get to the next step or grow within the organization. I'm a little disappointed in you, Charlie, that you didn't come up with this when you were like seven years old, man. What took you so long? I, I'm trying. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I, I'm no, I'll make up for it, man. I'm messing with <laughs> you, man. Holy cow. Were the wheels spinning then? When they must have seven. been spinning then at seven. You're like thinking, what can I do here? What can I do here? Or something. <laughs> Maybe like, not something quite. With that. I don't know. I think I was walking dogs back then or something. For money? Yeah. Smart. <laughs> Smart. Because, again, homeowners don't want to walk their dogs. Yeah. They think it's a chore. That's really smart. Yeah. Just look at what everybody that's in their comfort zone thinks as a chore, and you can make it into a multi-million dollar business. Yeah. As simple as that. Solving, solving rich people's problems. It's as simple as that. It ain't, it ain't stupid to think that VIL could be a multi-million dollar business one day. That's, that's not stupid talk. Not at all. Like, it's not, right? You probably have already thought about that. Yeah. And, like, if anybody's listening here and you're like, where did it start and where is it going to go? You're right. 
most of the time in construction, people just complicate the business and don't understand how they can simplify it and just make more profit from it. Yeah. Or just ignore the business and work on swinging a hammer. But that doesn't really grow the business as much. I've always no. said it, that the business, the admin, the systems that you're doing, figuring out what's making you money, what's not. Yes. Who else to hire? What kind of person that you want to bring into your network of your business? That's all valuable. Those are all assets, right? I think the majority of people in construction, they focus far too much on the liabilities of construction and not enough on the assets of construction. Yes. You just started out of the gate with assets. Like someone driving by and seeing that beat up bike, they saw that as a liability. You saw it as an asset. Yeah. That's a huge difference. It's perspective at that time. And then you figuring out, well, I'm going to just ride around and see other businesses that are in the neighborhood and they've got the trailer and they've got the skids. They've got all this. They've got manpower. They got all this stuff. I'm going to go up to them and just ask them a question. What's the worst they're going to say? Just shut up, kid. Get away from me. Well, so what? Then I'll go up to the next guy. Yeah. Some guy eventually is going to say, okay, what do you want, kid? Okay, sure. You want to come here? I'll, te- I'll show you. And that's what happened, right? Yeah. Which is hugely valuable. You had the foresight to do that, though. It's yeah. impressive, man. Honestly. Thank you. Thank you. What else are you working on? Just You're busy barely, as it is. <laughs> barely busy, yes. yes. You working seven days? Yes. You don't need any downtime? Chill out time? I, I probably need it, but keep, keep going. Do you have a driver's license? I do. Well, I'm finding your generation's having a hard time getting driver's licenses. Why, why do you think that? Because there's so many opportunities that they don't need to drive a vehicle, so they might as well just use the opportunities, Uber, car share, stuff like that. But I personally think it's creating congestion on the roadway. Here's my thought process. This is good. I think there's more congestion on the highways, on the roadways, not because there's more people driving, there's fewer experienced people driving. Yes. My generation, and probably I would say maybe as far back as 2025 years ago, we couldn't wait to turn 16 years old to get our license. I was stealing my dad's car in the middle of the night to go driving. Yeah. It wasn't really stealing, right? But borrowing. The, borrowing. To, and you were getting experience. So you be the one guy in the group of friends that you get the car. It's like my, I can't get it from my dad. You get the car. So we get the car. I get the car. And then I literally roll it down the driveway, roll it down the street because you don't want to. Parents have super hearing, which yeah. I don't understand because my hearing is not the greatest. So I don't understand. Right. But so you steal the car, you borrow the car, then you drive and you're in your teens and you're gaining experience and yeah. you're on the roadways when they're not as congested. Occasionally, you have the nerve to go into the core and you get into that whole fiasco and all of a sudden you create an adventure and that's a memory adventure in your lifetime. And then right? you end up on the highway. And then you end up on the highway shit. and you're doing all these things and you're <laughs> making sure you got the one older friend that's coming along that can be there just in case we get pulled over. Yeah. But my point is that you're in your late teens, early 20s, and you're getting all this experience. My problem is that you have all these people on the roadway now that are in their mid-20s to late 20s, early 30s, just getting that early experience in this mass of congestion, which is just making them extremely nervous about being in this. So what do they do? They tap the brakes, which creates congestion. And now you get tapping of brakes of several, several hundred cars and you got all this congestion. I wish I would see more people turn 60, get a license, get turn 60, turn 16, get a license and get all those experience years first while you don't really have all the job and all the networking you got to go do. And then you can be on the road in your twenties and driving like a person that should be driving. Yes. That's my thought process. That's how it should be. <laughs> I think it should be mandatory. I, agree I, I think it you. should expire your time frame from when you should get it. That's even better. If you don't get you, it, you got to hit that window. So that's even better. Yeah. Cause what if there's an emergency where you need to hop into a car and I don't know, I don't know what the emergency would be. Save a life or something like that. But it's like, what if there's something like, and you don't know how to drive? You better be a fast runner. Well, <laughs> or a cyclist. <laughs> yeah. No, but it, that's where, so it's good that, okay, you have yours. And then it's so, that's interesting, man. I want to know more about you. What's your background? What's your, like, like, what, what, I don't know. Where are your parents from? Like, what are you? Oh, um, I've got some Italian in me. Bit of, bit of Irish, Scottish. Kerrigan. Yeah, Kerrigan, Irish. Yeah, for sure. You got definitely the UK's in there. Where's the Italian from? Your grandma's Italian. Okay, all right. 
you know what though? Yeah, Irish, Scottish, work ethic. Yeah, Italian. Yeah, you're checking it all off, man. Yeah, simple. Yeah. Keep it simple. <laughs> <laughs> what else do I want to know, Charlie? What are you wanting to share, man? I don't know what else to ask you, man. I'm dumbfounded. I'm just dumbfounded. Seriously. I wish more and more, not necessarily just your age, just the 20s and the 30s and sometimes even the 40 guys, like guys that are getting into construction for the first time had this mindset. Like listen to this show, listen to you and go, I can take notes from Charlie. Well, it's all out there. Just got to meet people. People are nervous about meeting people because they're afraid of being rejected. Yes. They're yes. afraid of uh, failure. They're afraid of fear. They don't want to make a mistake or they don't want to look online as if they made a mistake yeah i'm sure that you've made mistakes you've learned from those mistakes well, i've made a lot of mistakes yeah so you probably well, have coveted those mistakes yeah. right well and when you learn to love eating shit that's when that's when it really starts it's true yeah. Yeah. but you still got a world of learning don't you never ends yeah it's not gonna end right never ends well i, I think you pay you pay ignorance debt ignorance tax ignorance debt say you, you're wanting to make $10 million in the year. You make $2 million. Where does that other $8 million go? It goes to the universe. That's, that's the ignorance debt that you pay. You're ignorant to the fact of making $10 million. So get as many of those learning experiences out of the way. I know, I know exactly what you mean. I know exactly what you mean. Those opportunities that you come into the fork of the road in yeah. life... And you don't want to take the risk of going down this one. So you choose the safer one, simpler one. You benefit a little bit. But then if someone actually showed you a mirror, like a convenience store mirror, and showed you if you would have went down this, you would have made this. Yeah. And then you would have had that opportunity. It's the same thing. I would, like. I think it was recently I saw David Goggins talk about how when you, you're going up to the, the gates of heaven and you're talking to God. I love that. And then he, and he talks about how he goes, okay, yeah, so David Goggins, this is what you accomplished, the marathon, this is what you all this. He goes, I didn't do all that. He goes, no, but you could have done all that. That scares the shit out of me. Yeah. I love that you're, you're phrasing it as ing like ignorant tax, like an ignorant debt. Ignorant it's what it is. And you it's totally what it is. If that's what you strive for, getting as many of those out of the way as possible, and what's the worst that can happen? You eat shit and you move on, you learn. And then you learn something new and do it again. But what if it actually does work out? Well, and it you takes go. you to the next one. And of course, you'll eat some more shit there. Yeah. But then you take it again and then you keep on going. Makes a lot of sense, man. Yeah. So that's how you look at it. So when you come up to a fork, you pay attention to that ignorant tax. Yeah. And urgency, too. Just making a decision. Stop pondering things. Just, just go. Go, go, go. And... You make the wrong decision, then there you go. You learn. You never, well, you never make the wrong decision because it's either you're going to learn from it or you're going to benefit from it. Yeah. One or the other. Yeah. Since 1991, Mississauga Hardware Centers, MHCI, or Saga Tools as the cool kids call it, has been a trusted name in the construction supply industry, serving the greater Toronto area as a family-founded, owned, and operated company they take pride in their reputation as one of the most respected construction supply providers in the GTA. At MHCI, they stand out for their commitment to fast and efficient service. Their team of friendly, courteous, and knowledgeable staff is available to assist you with any questions you may have. They understand the importance of product knowledge and strive to provide an unsurpassed level of expertise to their valued customers. They take pride in their ability to purchase large volumes of products directly from manufacturers worldwide. This enables them to pass on substantial savings to their customers. Whether you're embarking on a do-it-yourself project, constructing a multi-million dollar building, or involved in city infrastructure development, their products and prices remain highly competitive within the industry. Order online at www.mississaugahardware.com or better yet, go and visit them in person and always check out what's happening on their social at Mississauga Hardware Center with C-E-N-T-R-E. Who taught you this? Just, just pick it up. Pick it up. Surround myself with, with people with those mindsets. Surround yourself with the right people. Older friend groups. Uh, they're they're more mature, and that's that's what they do think about. No vices. Nothing at all. What do you mean, no Cigar, vices? Cigar, alcohol. I don't know. Gambling. No, none of that. 
Stay away from it. <laughs> just don't. Not do yet. It. <laughs> no, I don't. Don't like do it in moderation. That's all it is, man. It's just like don't do any of that stuff. I'm not. I'm not saying you should. I'm just saying because you know construction. You know how it is. Like if there's weeds rampant. Yeah. A lot of substance abuse is rampant. Alcoholism is rampant. It's just like it's just it's in the industry. It's just how it is, right? Yeah. So it's just you get a lot of people who have their own personal problems going on, and that's how they they turn to that. They turn to those options right out there, which just doesn't help their life. It makes their life actually worse, right? Yeah. So there's a lot of that going on. I'm sure that you've seen it, hints of it, right? Yeah. But you're not in the depths of it too, right? So. Thankfully. No, 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 no. You're a good kid. You're smart, man. So I don't know what else you what else you want to share, man. I've. I, I don't know. I've, I've got nothing else, Maddie. <sighs> you have any siblings? I do. I have. Two younger sisters. You're the oldest. I am, yes. Yes. You teaching them? They're doing their own thing. They're elementary school, high school. <laughs> They're doing their own learning. <laughs> How old are your parents? I think like 55. Okay. All right. What do they, you want to share what they do for a living or? Yeah, yeah. My uh, or they both do like they're in sales, selling stuff. Okay. Um, my dad's part of like a family business. They do uh, packaging, okay. lots of food packaging. Um, yeah. Is he impressed? Are your parents impressed? I think fairly. They think I I th- am not balanced enough. What's uh, missing? I. I, I think from their perspective, I need to balance things out, enjoy life a bit more. But, but I get the sense that you're enjoying this part of life and what you're creating. Are yeah, you not? Ju- just the process of yeah. learning and yeah. Or is, are, do you tra- do you is that being translated from them like just be a kid? Maybe in how they've been taught or what they surround themselves with. That's the normal. Um. Yeah, and they've been, don't get me wrong, super supportive with everything I've done and I'm thankful for that. Um, but sometimes they, they think I need to tone it down a bit. Because you're working all the time, like seven days a week, right? You're figuring out the next move. Yeah, yeah. But when you get obsessed with the game, it never never gets shut off. Yeah, but eventually you're going to have to, not necessarily, I'm saying take a break, but see what else life has to offer you. For right. sure. There's always, I've always said it on the show, too. It's like, yeah, sure, the show's called The Construction Life, but part of that is life, right? You can have such a, a love for the construction part of things, but don't forget to live your life as well, too, right? Yeah, and having a, a system in place that uh, you, you're able to repeat and yeah. continue long term. You're not just getting burnt out after a spring yeah, season or whatnot. Because right? it is hard work. Yeah. But it's well-deserved money, like pay and experience all this stuff yeah. who came up with the logo um i think i had a designer do it okay i think yeah like that was four years ago yeah there's a few ideas getting thrown around and i think i was sitting in like a grade seven class or something <laughs> and talking touching the designer <laughs> and uh yeah it's kind of <laughs> what we came up with you're like in grade seven. I wish like more and more contractors would like take your, you need to write a book, man. Write a book on how you built your business and share those little insights into everybody else so they could pay attention to it. You think? I'm just making the suggestion. Would people read that? I totally think people would read it. Just don't tell them how old you are. They yeah. will read it. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> they will yeah. read it if you're younger anyway. They'll read it regardless because the, f- the information will be valuable. Yeah, extremely valuable. But I think that like the biggest lesson to just take from here is just like it's not as complicated as it really is. And you're you're just figuring it out. OK, sure. There's problems. It's construction. We figure it out. Fine. How do we solve it now? How do, yeah. we, how do we move on to the next? You have problems. You have you have the same problems that we all have, whether you're in your first year, your teens starting a business or your 20s, 30s, 40s, whatever, starting a construction business. We all have the same problem. So you figuring out a certain way to do it is valuable. Yeah, for sure it is, man. I would. I'm just making the suggestion. I'm probably pretty sure you won't have a hard time writing it. I don't mean to add more on your plate, man. There's only <laughs> seven days a week, right? But it's not like I mean, you could probably help out other people on how you did it, right? Or maybe just build it a bit more. 
once I get a few more lessons out of the way, then exactly I could add some more value. Because you still have problems ahead of you. You Many. know there's shit coming. Yeah. Right. You just know it. You can smell it. It's coming. But you you're preparing yourself to handle it. Well, and we're asking for it. Like. Kind of you you want it. You need to be asking for it. Yeah. Right. And you should be asking for it instead of avoiding it. Right. That's basically the construction life at that point, right? I don't know what else to ask you, man. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not too much of a help, eh? <laughs> no, no, it's not that. I'm just trying to... You you, vet, you kind of shared what you shared, and I'm trying to figure out what else to ask you and stuff like that. Why don't you just buy a really expensive pickup truck and just spend a hundred grand on a pickup truck and just slap the logo on it and just put some spinners on it? Why don't you just do that? I'm sure you got a reason why. That's you don't. Not my time to be flashy. I want to. We're we're here to be the best and put all that money. That money needs to work, not be a fancy truck, but below your means. Yeah, exactly. Because you, you're. At, is it going to get lean? Do you think it's going to get lean? Like work wise out there, things. I mean, everybody was busy. I'm sure you were busy too. Yeah, we've everyone's seen it this year, right? Yeah, it slowed down, right? How did you react to that? How did you, because obviously you, four years in the business, um, three of those years were the funny years, right? The thick of things, bullshit. And, and then now you've seen this year kind of level off itself. It's a little different now. How did you start assessing that, that shift in, in clients? Yeah, it's been a shift, like number one, the stage of our business, but also the economy and everyone in the industry has seen it, and not just landscape industry contractors. And more so chasing sales and putting sales processes in place opposed to just taking whatever you want and stuff's just rolling in. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, a few shifts. You, you're you obviously vetting your clients. Are you getting your clients? Are you, you, you're getting them all from Google. You're getting them on the website. So they're going to your website. They're finding you that way. They're finding you digitally. Most of the time your client is digitally found. Well, yeah, digitally our lawn signs trucks or just Oakville Moms groups talking about us. Oakville Moms group, eh? Yeah. How many moms are there? What are we talking about? I don't know. I'm just assuming yeah, it could like, be a, a huge I, I think pool. like maybe 5,000, 7,000 moms. The moms love us. Ooh, really, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. They, they do that. No, it makes <laughs> sense because now you've got a bunch of people that are all networking about things that need to be taken care of. Yeah. And for whatever reason, they're not being taken care of. So then they reach out to you guys and now you guys get a sale from that. So if you guys are looking positively on this group, it makes a lot of sense, man. Yeah. That's why I wasn't thinking this whole kind of dating scene or something like that. I'm just thinking, I was thinking like, yeah, there's a pool of potential clients right there is what it is. Well, yeah. And they're all in the same boat. They want the best. Exactly. Exactly. So a lot of contractors are not realizing that if you go digital and get onto these specific groups, yeah, you might get sales generated from that just from one person talking to another person. And all of a sudden they're like, well, you should give me a call. Well, and also like the Burlington Dads group has been um, like, I know there's a lot that goes on in there. Not so much for us, but I've uh, a few guys we work with. Um, they've been successful in that. Um, so just any any Facebook group. So what do you do? You plant in like a... You plant an ad there, or you plant to how? What do you do? Um, like in that group specifically, in that group, yeah. And no, so it's it's just an example of what other guys are are doing. Like I'm I'm not a dad, so I'm not in it. But uh, like other bin disposal guys, they go to like events or charities or just networking. Um, yeah. People talk. That's what I mean. They talk, right? Yeah. So all of a sudden, if they need their chores done around the house, and they need a new patio, they need a new whatever, or they need a pool. They'll reach out and talk to you, right? Exactly. It's smart. What else are you working like? What like digitally wise? What are you What are you looking at regarding opportunities to get your messaging out there? Like social media, like, like everyone. Um, you get a lot of DMs from people reaching out to you for work. It's more of we use it as a portfolio to send people to see what we do. TikTok mm -hmm. has actually been really, really big. Good for, for you us. guys. Yes. Really? Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't even think I I've on on. IG, I found you on IG. Yeah, TikTok's been cool. How many followers you got on TikTok? Uh, I think 4,000. Really, yeah? The general manager of TikTok Canada is actually one of our clients. So he helps us out a bit with stuff. 
The general manager of TikTok Canada is one of your clients? Yeah, yeah. How did you score that? He found us on Google. <laughs> Okay, I'm trying to find you on... Uh, VIL Landscaping, it should come out. It's underscore, isn't it? VIL underscore, no? Yeah, yeah. So he found... <laughs> that's funny, actually. Yeah, you got 4,000 followers on TikTok. <laughs> the hardest part is getting content from all the guys out there. There. You're, you, okay, you're, okay, I get it. You're managing your own social media or you're hiring somebody else? We we manage it ourselves. Just in house, right? Yeah, it's a struggle, but we some sometimes find time. Good for you, man. Look at this, eh? Did you build anything else for the, the TikTok guy? Did I build anything? Yeah, no, nothing. You just, no, just videos. So you're just networking. You're just getting your messaging out there, and all of a sudden, you're literally getting it to one person to the next person, and they just keep on sharing. They start doing the work for yourself, for you, for your business. Yeah, well, and the people we can meet. Like, it's just meeting cool people. Like, if we can help them, great. If not, no problem. Did you ever have a problem with just speaking to anybody? Because most young people are nervous about going up to complete strangers and just have, asking them a question. But it doesn't seem like you ever had a problem going up and just talking to somebody. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure at first knocking on doors was a bit, caused some anxiety for me. But once you do it a few times, I kind of got Still over it. Wrong. Yeah. Just eat the shit. Eat the shit. Simple as that. Yeah. Yeah. Charlie, let's do the 10 questions, man. I don't, unless you want to share anything else, but if anybody wants to reach out to you and they need any maintenance care, landscaping, any kind of disposal bins, disposal bins. Yeah. Just reach out to you on either DM or through the uh, right here. Well, it's VIL Landscaping. And on web, a website is VILLLandscaping.net. Phone number is 365-228-1010. You can reach him on his email, charlie at VILLandscaping.ca. All over social media, IG and TikTok, and VIL underscore landscaping. And then Charlie Kerrigan on LinkedIn. How many connections you got on LinkedIn? We're new on LinkedIn. Oh, you're brand new, eh? We are, yes. New kid on the block. I got you beat on that one. <laughs> 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 you ready for these 10 questions? Yes. What everyday sound brings you joy and comfort? Um, starting up the, the diesels in the morning, especially now it's getting colder, that, that fires me up. something I look forward to. So it's kind of a nice smell for some weird reason. It is. I kind of like it. What's your favorite beverage? Water, water, or coffee. Coffee keeps me going. Your the productivity guy? from coffee is espresso shots. There's the Italian in you. <laughs> what is your least favorite tool? Um, could be any tool. It doesn't have to be a construction tool. It could be any tool in life. What's your least favorite tool? Favorite tool? <laughs> you don't have one? You don't have a least favorite tool? I would say um, like those those clamps to pick out pavers, like picking them out. Um, when you're relaying a patio, you, you grab them, they're like a clamp, and they go in the joints yeah, to I grab those. I, I'm they're not similar a to the, um, the brick, like they kind of, it, yeah, it yeah, works yeah. on pressure, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I don't like the small ones because that means you're relaying a patio or fixing a mistake. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you're talking about. Uh, not never a fun time. What turns you on creatively? Uh, seeing the d from the design process to real life, especially like landscape designs. Like you're working that. with a lot of like designers and landscape designers, and yeah, we have a designer we work with who does okay. all of our stuff. Nice. Yeah. What word or concept do you find overused these days? Um. <sighs> what are people saying that you can't stand being heard? Balanced. <laughs> I, I hate that word, balance. Balance. Very from, overused. From clients or from employees or from the industry? From anyone. From anyone? Like, we're here to be the best and you're talking about balance? What's your favorite curse word? 
If you don't curse, you don't have to curse. I'm not going to force you to curse. What, whatever goes, the situation varies. Depends on what happens. It's whatever just naturally comes out. <laughs> that yeah. kind of idea? Yeah, whatever naturally comes out. <laughs> What's your favorite vehicle in the entire world? Um, I think from a convenience perspective, a helicopter would save some time. Get those man hours down. I don't doubt it. I'm not disagreeing with you. What do you uh, What do you miss from your childhood, man? What do you miss from last week? <laughs> <laughs> um, not that I miss it, but like you didn't have a care in the world. Like you had no obligations. Yeah, you did I not know. give a shit. I know. Uh, if you could master a skill outside of your own, what would it be? A skill outside of my own? Yeah. Um, I think selling, like... Sales? Sales is a skill I'd master. You can sell anything. I think you're always learning it. Yeah. You, yeah. It's, people are afraid of it, doing it. I think they're just afraid of the rejection after rejection. Yes. I'm sure you've heard this over and over. It's like, it's not on the first phone call. It's not on the first email. It takes like 8, 10, 12 connections before you even get a sale but the majority of people give up after the second one if yeah. not the first one yeah that's i agree with you man last question if heaven exists what would you like to hear god say when you arrive at those pearly gates um like the david goggins thing i want him to be checking off those boxes that you did all that stuff. that i did them all good for you man yes Charlie, absolute pleasure meeting you, man. Seriously, thanks so much for being on the show. Man, yeah, I, I I'm appreciate so it. So glad that Kim connected us. Yes, yes. I wish you all the best, man. Like, Kim's amazing. So that's yeah, no, awesome. He's, I'm sure he's teaching you a bunch of stuff. So yes, so you totally get it. And he was super excited when I saw him earlier today, and he was like saying, "Yeah, yeah." Charlie's looking forward to getting on the show yeah. and talking, right? So you did, you did amazing. It's like, I love your story. It's great. It's wonderful, man. Like, Thank you. I wish you all the best, man. More and more people in construction need to be doing what you're doing simple as that that's all i'm gonna say <laughs> right they should be taking some notes here so thank you for that again vil landscaping vil landscaping.net and the number again is 365-228-1010 charlie at vil landscaping.ca and all over social media under vil underscore landscaping thanks charlie thank you that's it we're out of here awesome.